So what is that on your finger there? I'm actually wearing a wire plectrum called a Mizrab. And um, we'll wear it on the first finger to do all of the plucking. Right. Yeah. Because it, one of the things that really defines classical guitar is the fact that we grow our fingernails for right. the purpose of plucking the string. Okay. Oh, well, that sounds really good. I'd had a, quite nice, I'd had yeah. a problem fingernail during right. the last year. Okay. And I've hunted around for various uh, options, and this might have been. But you couldn't play. Uh, uh, all the things we do with just the one. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's incredibly thank you. tight. It is quite tight, yeah. Does so, it um, permanently affect your It has, finger? yeah. Over the years, um, the finger tends to shape, change shape a right. little um, to, to cope with wearing it all the time. The, the concerto I'm playing with the Philharmonia yeah. starts with that strumming. Is there an, equi an equivalent sort of effect? You can yeah. strum with the one finger? We strum with the one finger. <laughs> We, to do that, we use all three of the right. fingers. So how do you play rapid, rapid things? Type yeah, I mean, uh, we, we have a similar sort of, uh, we're moving along the left, uh, yeah. the, with the left hand on the main string. Um, but instead of moving across the strings, which you do in guitar, we yeah. tend to do all of the melody, most of the melody on this one string. So. Right. It's amazing the amount of movement in your first finger. Yeah. Because we avoid yeah. too much of moving that. Moving consecutively, um, yeah. So most of the training in sitar initially does involve practicing scales, you know, to become used to basically moving across this what one a, melody string. What would a starter scale be? A starter scale would be the natural, um, what we call the sargum. So it's um, equivalent to the solfa, basically. Sa, re, ga, ma, fa, da, ni, sa. That's okay. right, yeah. So we would just basically grind those uh, right. in the beginning. Um, I can barely comprehend that, so. <laughs> and you use your second finger at exactly. the top. Exactly, yeah. Oh no. Exactly. That's brutal. They're yeah. so. But the total similarly. opposite of what we yeah. do. We all do exactly. it there in one position without moving Definitely. the first finger. But the that's amazing you can do that. How quick do you ever have to do that sort of thing? I mean, that was fast. Yeah, it, it, can, it can get a lot faster. Wow. Um, so, you know, there's a, usually a progression in the performance. It starts yeah. off extremely slow um, with what we call an alarp, an introduction which is played just by itself. I'm just playing with the drone in the background. Yeah. It can be slower, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's basically a note by note progression um, where you're expanding and showing the melody, or what we call rag, the melodic yeah. framework. Yeah. Um, then it uh, builds up in pace and then we introduce composition where a tabla player would be keeping a time cycle for us. Does that equate to anything in Western music? When you say time cycle, yeah. I think uh, bar, probably. Is, sure. that, is that the best It's, it's similar, um, because we look at things in a cyclic way. So, for example, a very common time cycle is called Tintal, a 16-beat time cycle. And um, it's treated as four bars of four. OK. Yeah, so a composition, for example, if I was to play a very basic thing in 16 beats, yeah. I've even got an iPod application which can play the tabla for us. All right. <laughs> so we can use that. Um, but if I demonstrate, say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That just repeats itself. Okay. And then um, as we progress, then we start to improvise. Yeah. But the cycle is the fixed thing which gives us okay. the reference. Yeah. When to come back to one. But it would build up. 
up, build up, and um, we would enter a section called the jala, where we're basically using the drone strings to create rhythmic patterns. So. Right. That. You make the right hand look effortless. It's just, <laughs> it looks like a, a fairly sort of gentle up and down, but the left hand looks phenomenally virtuosic. It's yes. spectacular to watch. Yes. It's the sort of thing that we classical musicians would spend hours yep. in practice rooms, and I'm sure you do exactly the it's same. It's the same. But yeah. just it's methodically Absolutely. beating out those, those skills. Definitely. Actually. And uh, I mean, even the right hand, I mean, thank yeah, you very yeah. much for saying it looks up. No, it looks up. And you, you, were, you <laughs> have this kind of really relaxed um, smile. I've practiced that, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it is actually very, very, uh, I mean, difficult. But obviously yeah. with time, like yourself, I yeah. mean, you know, you execute the most difficult things, yeah. but it's taken you a lot of time. Yeah, it's a, a lifetime yeah. spent Absolutely. acquiring the skills. The nice thing about having that drone going is that uh, it's in D. Yes. And the first movement of the piece, the concerto to Aaronworth that I'm playing, right. is in D, so it starts there. And goes on like that. And it, it's it, beautiful. And it hovers around. There. So by there, right. when it ends up here uh, with an E minor chord, right. then, then you know our our traditions part company. Yes. Because I guess the one of the defining things about Western classical music is it roams through keys and harmonies. Of course. Yeah. Um, as its key tool for creating. Um, Variety and, and interest and character, but it's the same things, sure. but in a, with in a different way. And then the very famous, the most famous piece um, or movement from the concerto is the <laughs> yeah, the table on the corner. Yeah. That's fine. It starts in B minor and moves through various keys, and then there's the this one's in a great on sitter. Rodrigo's managed to write incredibly characterful and varied openings. This is really evocative. I have to say, it starts piano and it's incredibly hard to do that really quiet. At the beginning of the piece, you're always a little bit nervous at the beginning of a concert. And the, a real annoyance for me would be to miss one of the chords. So you end up with, instead of, and then the slow movement with this very famous. Beautiful. And that has a little drone uh -huh. from the double basses. And then a beautiful melody I from the, the core anglais. Love and then them. that's great variety as well. Great. So I don't know, I think, um, as you were saying, anybody who's familiar with and enjoys Indian classical music, I, don't, I wouldn't perceive any barrier no. at all in terms no. of going to, to Absolutely uh, appreciate not. a Western classical concert Definitely. any more than I would in, in coming to see you play. Absolutely. Which I'll make a mission of doing now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you play. Oh, well, will you, yes. can you come to this concert? I will oh, brilliant. Be coming, oh, that'd be yeah. fabulous. Definitely. Fab. Thank you. Oh, see, I want to use my fourth finger as well. Did you never do? Right. 
it's not humiliating of myself. <laughs> there we go. Oh, dear. <laughs>